This is the Noid. He's known to be one of the worst restaurant mascots in history. It's not every day that you can say that your pizza mascot prompted a full-on hostage crisis, and yet this middle-aged rabbit man, yep, he's done it. But if he is so bad, then why did Domino's Pizza recently decide to bring him back from the dead? Spoiler alert, they did it to cover up a dirty little secret. So what are they hiding? That, my friends, is what I aim to answer today. internet, welcome to Food Theory, where we always deliver your theories piping hot. Today we're looking at one of the most well-known marketing campaigns of all time, Domino's 30 Minutes or Less. See, back at the end of the 1970s, Domino's started to lag behind the success of Pizza Hut. Back then, when, um... 96% of you weren't even born yet, pizza delivery was something that only a few local pizza restaurants did. No large chain was delivering their pizzas the way that we have them today. Pizza was mostly a takeout food, something that you could see here with Pizza Hut's first ever commercial, which shows a man driving his car through town only to create waves of chaos that ripple throughout the neighborhood. The early days of television advertising, ladies and gentlemen. I just have so many questions about this, like, why is his car so tiny? And who thought that inciting a neighborhood riot by running over people's feet was a good way to chill for their pizza. Then again, I suppose it got me to think way too hard about this commercial, so really, who's the true winner here? Buzz buzz to the Pizza Hut indeed. Buzz buzz. Anyway, in an effort to one-up the hut, one of the owners of rival pizzeria Domino's had the brilliant idea of differentiating themselves by delivering their pizzas. This was a godsend for families all over the country who were tired of having their toes run over by large dads and tiny red cars. But not only was it enough to deliver the pizza, Domino's then created the 30 minute or less guarantee. You'd have your pizza in a half hour, or you'd get half a dollar off your order. By 1979, they expanded it. 30 minutes, or your pizza's free. Domino's figured that they were making most of their deliveries well within the window of time anyway, so giving a win-win guarantee to customers would only drive business up. And they were absolutely right about that. Sales skyrocketed. They went from opening their 200th location in 1978 to over 1,000 stores open and a billion dollars in revenue just seven years later. Though they were still number two behind Pizza Hut, Domino's had solidly carved out its place. 54% of all pizza deliveries in the U.S. were coming from a Domino's restaurant. The 30 minutes or less slogan was such a huge success that it set the industry standard for delivery times, and it became ingrained in pop culture. You're two minutes late, dude. Ah, oh, come on. I couldn't find a place. There was just one teeny tiny little problem with that. Meeting the 30 minute deadline was difficult for a lot of drivers. Not only were they dealing with traffic delays and road conditions, they were also fighting against customers looking to game the system by turning off their lights to fool the delivery drivers into wasting time, all in an effort to get some free pizza. Basically, the whole thing created a system that encouraged reckless driving and irresponsibility. Stories of accidents and deaths started to permeate into the public eye. Lawsuits started to crop up over injuries and damages caused by errant drivers. And what simultaneously became one of the best marketing campaigns and worst backfires in restaurant history, Domino's left a trail of literal death and destruction in their wake. They needed to do something, and they needed to do something fast. And born out of this chaos, one creepy bunny man would emerge to save the day, to take the heat, to distract away from all the bad PR. And that man was the Noid, a mascot created to sweep everything under the rug, only to have it all blow up in their faces 10 times worse. Now, weird mascots, they're nothing new. I mean, we got a clown chilling for a burger place, bug-eyed fuzz balls, hawking sub sandwiches, and a disturbingly smooth man sexualizing floor bleach. But the Noid is not familiar. He's not cute. He is not oddly sexy. He is just flat out disturbing. He's a middle-aged imp in red spandex with bunny ears. Yet somehow, somehow, Domino saw this guy and was like, yeah, this guy, this shall be the character that helps us sell our pizza. Basically, he was meant to embody everything that can possibly delay your delivery. The things that annoyed you about getting a pizza. And Domino's would then thwart him every time. Cold pizza, road problems, smashed boxes, it was all on account of the Noid. Have you ever been frustrated because the Noid ruined your pizza? We avoid the Noid. And defying all known logic, the Noid was actually a massive success. In fact, he was so successful that he spun off into everything from merch to video games. Yep, you heard me. Games, plural. The first game released in 1989, aptly named Avoid the Noid, where you play a pizza delivery driver that has to go up 30 floors to deliver a pizza to Doom Industries. All while an army of Noids try to stop you using everything from water balloons to bazookas. If you lose, you're greeted to the most obnoxious video game laugh ever. Stand aside, Final Fantasy X, there's a new king in town. Ah! 
<laughs> it was then followed up by a second and third game that had the Noid going around town to accost locals with his yo-yo and his terrible 3D platforming. Probably a whole episode buried in here about branded food games. Yo, Noid, you are no cool spot, my friend. In any case, people seem to forget about their hangups with Domino's delivery as the pizza company moved away from the 30 minutes or less and embraced their new slogan, Avoid the Noid. Basically, everything was going according to plan for Domino's. That is, until late 1989, when Kenneth Lamar Noid, a man suffering from paranoid schizophrenia, entered an Atlanta Domino's with a gun and held two employees at gunpoint, claiming that the villainous mascot was created to mock him personally. Eventually, the hostages escaped and Kenneth was apprehended. In the end, he was deemed unfit to stand trial due to reasons of insanity. Needless to say, the bad press from the incident resulted in Domino scaling back their marketing of the Noid. And almost like clockwork, the following year they started to feel the heat again with two high-profile delivery driver crashes. They continued with the same slogan until 1993, but after two lawsuits resulted in $79 million being paid out in damages, they officially ended the 30-minute or less guarantee. And what happened to the Noid, you ask? Well, two years later in 1995, the company shelved the character permanently, when news started to spread that Kenneth Lamar Noid had taken his own life. It seemed like the Noid was fated to live on as just a weird oddity of pop culture and food history. Look, it's a Noid! Avoid the Noid! He ruins pizzas! Perhaps it was the Noid who should have avoided me. Except, now he's back. More than 35 years after his introduction, the Noid has returned and is now starring in commercials again. Why now? Is it nothing more than a nostalgia trip? Or is there a more nefarious reason behind that extremely disturbing face? I suspect that it's all a cover-up. The Noid's reappearance was time to coincide with a marketing campaign advertising Domino's driverless cars. This time around, he's sporting a giant blow-up version of himself to block intersections and, you know, just casually, a laser chainsaw. But notice what I just said a second ago. Domino's is experimenting with driverless cars. It's largely new and unproven technology. In short, I suspect that they're bringing out the Noid preparing to explain away the flaws and accidents that they foresee in this driverless fleet, just like they did all those years ago to distract away from the car accidents that their delivery cars were getting into. This actually coincides with behavior that we've seen in the past from the company. You see, in 2008, Domino's stock price was at an all-time low. By this point in history, the public perception of Domino's pizza was in the tank, and Domino's made the incredibly risky decision of doing ads that were focused on exactly that, the fact that they sucked. Doesn't feel like there's much love in Domino's pizza. Domino's pizza crust to me is like cardboard. Worst excuse for pizza I've ever had. The sauce tastes like ketchup. Totally void of flavor. This we hear over and over and over. This began what was known as their turnaround campaign, where the company went back to the drawing board and basically started from scratch. New recipes, new flavors, new technology, all in an effort to win back the trust of customers. And one of their key changes to the process was an online order tracker as part of their push for order transparency. It allowed customers to know where their pizza was at each and every stage of the process. And sure enough, who was there to coincide with that launch? The Noid. In 2009, the Noid started to make a limited run appearance around the edges of this big pizza turnaround campaign, mostly in the form of t-shirts. I suspect that this was Domino's getting ready to unleash the Noid once again if things started to go south. Luckily for them, the pizza turnaround was a massive success and the Noid didn't need any further exposure. But he does seem to be their repeated failsafe, the guy that gets rolled out anytime there's a big corporate shakeup or any chance of upsetting customers. Because we see it all happening again in 2017, when there were small subtle hints that the Noid might be circulating once more. This time he started appearing as an Easter egg in the background of certain commercials. Earn points when you order. If you blinked, you probably missed him. Watch again. Watch there he is. But why? Why is he just making this random appearance? Just to get people talking about the clip online? Maybe. But this commercial was actually part of a larger campaign where Domino started experimenting with autonomous pizza delivery. In short, when a new campaign with potentially disastrous results launches, the Noid is sure to follow, waiting in the wings to take the blame and the PR attention away from whatever the real issue is. This also would be far from the first time a company has used humor as a form of crisis management. Back in 2018, KFC was being slammed with horrible press over chicken shortages that were causing a majority of the restaurants to close. It was so bad that people were actually calling the police to report these closures because of how ticked off they were they couldn't get their chicken. Some even did the unthinkable and went to Burger King. I'm about to go to Burger King. Anyway, in the midst of this firestorm, KFC pulled out the FCK bucket, a simple and honestly very clever one-page ad that got so much love on the internet that people completely forgot their anger. Seems this tactic is the same one that Domino's is using with the 
annoyed, which honestly says more about us as consumers than them as businesses. Don't be distracted by the funny bunny man. Have some standards here, people. Anyway, if this is indeed the tactic that they're using with Noid, seems like they might be on the right track for using it. The self-driving car campaign they're doing has already caused issues. One woman was left chasing down her driverless vehicle in flip-flops because it wasn't programmed to double park in her driveway. The cars have also been struggling with places like apartment buildings when customers don't come out in time. Much like they did in 2009 and again in 2017, perhaps this soft relaunch of the Noid was in anticipation of the problems that are going to arise if the press stories start to catch fire. For now, Domino's has put a brief pause on expanding their self-driving experiment to the rest of the nation outside of Houston. And correspondingly, the Noid left again with what seems to be his farewell tweet saying, see you later, pizza haters. But just know that the next time you see the Noid rearing his ugly little red rabbit ears, what lurks underneath is a corporate decision that Domino's fears is going to give him some severe backlash. In the end, his wacky antics are just meant to distract us away from the dark underbelly of Domino's delivery. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Speaking of pizza, if you want to learn why you should never order more than one topping on your pizza, take a bite out of the video on the left. Or if you happen to be elite gamer, check out the video on the right where we make a pizza out of Mountain Dew. It was a wild taste experience. As always, I'll see you all next week.